Wonderful. Yeah, I'm always like 5% sick. What's up you guys? It's Joelle and I'm here with my friend PJ. Hello. Uh, this is episode 2 of my Low Key Dope series um, where I get to interview awesome, creative, and driven young people that are within my communities that really inspire me and um, just to share a little bit about their stories, um, how they got to where they are now, and how you can kind of learn to emulate their creativity, character, and just drive um, to do what they're doing. PJ and I are both 19s at Dartmouth. When did we meet? I don't even know. I've like known who he was Yeah, forever. that's what I was going to say. I feel like you've been <laughs> on my radar. We've been in the same places, but yeah. really started hanging out this year. Probably. Yeah, right. PJ has really gained a name for himself at Dartmouth as a DJ, as the founder of a few different artistic movements you could say. Oh, uh, yeah. I like that. <laughs> it's been a good four years. It a has. long four years. It has. Um, but yeah, do you want to start just by telling us a little bit about what you do on campus or off, like creatively? And yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Name's PJ. Came to Dartmouth. Super excited to be a DJ. I was a DJ in high school. Saved up my money working for this company. Came to school with all this new equipment I bought and just started hustling super hard <laughs> to pick up all these gigs and stuff. Freshman year was trying to make a name as a DJ, making a lot of music, and was doing so largely by myself. First really cool music project that I did at Dartmouth, I'm really stoked on, was Brit Track Studios. We have a recording studio in the hop, and my freshman spring, moving into sophomore year, we renovated it with uh, with Sunny Nap, this prophet Dartmouth. That gave a space for people to make music on campus and start connecting, and so the music makers started coming together with Brit Tracks. And then sophomore year, we also did Booth, which is this DJ company that I love. I think it's probably the coolest project of mine, <laughs> honestly. It's huge too, like everyone on campus knows what Booth is. That's You're not exaggerating. Right? No, I'm like not even kidding. Super exciting project. We have 10 DJs now, and every winter we train our freshman DJs. And so we keep a really high standard of quality for the product and then just try and work as hard as possible and it's worked out super yeah. super well. Really happy, proud of Booth because I think that's something that will stick around at Dartmouth long after I'm gone, yeah. which makes me so happy. I love these kids. And then junior year, I had a really weird D plan. You now y'all know about the D plan. <laughs> my junior year, I was here in the fall and then I took my junior winter off. I lived in New York and worked in music marketing and PR. Junior spring, I studied abroad. Vienna, Austria and studied music, went to all these awesome. classical concerts and just worked on my own production and theory. And then junior summer, I was off as well. I lived in LA, worked for a record label, Epic Records. Brahim, Anyways. Evan, Warren, my guys. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had to give the Epic shout outs. Taking all that time off was sweet and it was really cool to be in these different vibrant communities around the world where there's a lot of creative interaction and people coming together to make larger scale projects. And I thought, these people are at Dartmouth. These people are in my life. My senior year, I want to come back and find these people and bring them together so they can work with each other and we can make larger, cooler things. And that was the birth of Ilwe, Ivy League work ethic. Supposed to be a little tongue in cheek, uh, <laughs> head turning. Giving out these stickers. So many stickers. Trying to get people to use this hashtag when they share their cool stuff yeah. on social media. You'll notice on all of my Instagram photos, I use that hashtag. <laughs> yes. So the foundation of the Ilwe project, hashtag Ilwe, is a digital community of sorts. You see the stickers on street signs when you come to Dartmouth and you're greeted with a foundation of creative efforts by your peers when you check it out on Instagram or on YouTube. And people have connected. Mm -hmm. My friends who are screenwriters, I say, what do you need to make your pilot? And then we can go to the hashtag and see the people posting their cinematography reels posting their video edits and so people are coming together and successfully making these larger scale projects and it is a web store and artist collections mm -hmm. so I've been soliciting designs we've been getting these designs from all these talented visual artists who are on the project and we'll run a t-shirt a print and a wild card item of their mm -hmm. choosing every week we put out one new collection from a different artist I'll have the link to um, the Ilwe shop down below as well as like you know, Instagram details and whatnot of PJ so you guys can check out everything he's doing because it's insane that someone who is 
you know, a full-time student is able to produce this much stuff this quickly. Like, I truly do not understand how he's able to do this sustainably. So, big props, big, big props. Additionally, one thing that PJ, you know, he casually mentions that he makes music, which is also not a casual endeavor <laughs> at all. I'll have his SoundCloud links down below, oh, and all the music you. in the background of this video will be music by PJ. So I'll have like the song titles and all of that in the description as well. Do you want to talk a little bit about like your music making? Dude, absolutely. <laughs> I started DJing when I was in 10th grade. Mm -hmm. I decided that I just, I wanted to make dubstep mixes. <laughs> no way. I'm serious. <laughs> so I taught myself how to DJ on open source software on my desktop computer. All my favorite DJs were making music. Mm. They were producing. So I turned to Ableton and I tried my hand at it. And I was trash. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody just starts making music and He's it's like, good. He's like, yeah, this is sick. This <laughs> take is so long. I love making music because I can go back and listen to projects that I made in high school and listen to them and just immediately be taken back to that mm -hmm. time in my life when I was making that song. And it's a really strong emotional connection. I love making music. I produce hip hop beats for other rappers and have some cool projects coming out. Working with this rapper named Bambi. So he's got a really cool music video wow. coming out for a song we did soon. That was That's the first so beat cool. I sold at Full Publishing. Really? The Bambi, yeah. So That's I'm pretty stoked so on cool. that. I always just try and make music that reflects what I'm thinking or feeling mm -hmm. because that value is like the highest value from, from my music. Would you say you have any particular like music inspirations or like muses that you look up to with your music or is mm -hmm. it a really like personal insular kind of creative process? I'm always listening to music. Yeah. I listen to a very diverse collection of music. Mm -hmm. And so I think that a lot of the influences come in unexpected ways. I grew up listening to bands like Green Day and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. And, and so all these different sounds kind of come together and then make themselves apparent in my beats or kind of more dancey electronic yeah. music that I put out sometimes. Gus Dapperton's an artist yeah. that inspires me. He's just wonderfully himself and so I remixed the Gus Dapperton song recently. I'm always so intrigued by people's like creative process and how they, yeah. how they you know develop a taste and a style so that's really cool. Inspiration I think will always be a very insular individual endeavor. Mm -hmm. You can't teach yourself to be inspired how yeah. someone else is inspired <laughs> but as far as the yeah. workflow and just tenacity and finishing moves. I've grown mm -hmm. so much as a musician yeah. and finishing my ideas since working with people like Trevor and Max and Henry, some of my closest collaborators oh, yeah. on campus. Yeah. Do you want to tell them a little yeah. bit about Let's talk about next turned life. into. Dude. Hello. Okay. I manage this pop group on campus called Next Life. I think pop is, is selling them short. It's pop sympathetic dance music <laughs> like you've never heard before. We had a song with this girl, Lila McKenna. Mm -hmm. that oh, came out last term called Be Better, streamed super well, and we actually have another one coming oh, really? out this term, and I actually have to Wait, demo really? for you. Wait, really? They are. I love you, my sons. <laughs> These kids, you have to understand, like, they are going through the craziest, like, 10-week terms oh, at my Dartmouth. Gosh. Like, people are so busy on campus, but they're taking the time to make music and to, like, yeah. really share what they're doing with other people, which I think is so cool. I think that's one of the things that I love most about what PJ does is that he like finds people who just need like that push or just need that organization to get people to really do what they want to do. Do you want to talk about that actually? Yeah, just, like, I can the talk balance about school of... and balance. I made my own major at Dartmouth. I'm an engineering major modified with music. I figured out very early freshman year that I love music and that if I didn't study music or throw my entire being into making music and becoming better at making music, then I would look back at college and think, why did I, you know, why not? Why didn't I do that? As an academic experience, I'm so grateful for engineering because I can just walk around and kind of understand how things work. And the design cycle mm -hmm. education from engineering yeah. has helped me finish my project. I finish so much more swiftly and confidently with a very critical engineering mindset. I think that's one of the secrets yeah. to just being as productive and outputting as much content as possible mm -hmm. is finishing and being lethally organized. Yeah. <laughs> I live and die by my Google Calendar and my little black planner. I lost this for a couple weeks in the winter and just oh, freaked terrible. out. I think that one of the keys for me, I start with the creative stuff and I dedicate a certain amount of time. And I, I have habitually worked music and videos and my other creative hustles into my day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and I think of them as necessities in the same way that I would think about class or a sports team. That's one of the inspirations be behind the name Ivy League work ethic. Mm -hmm. These kids are working so hard past their academics, past trying to have a social life, past some of these kids are varsity athletes, yeah. and they're still finding time to just pour hours and hours into their passions. I admire it. Kind of coming in on the last couple questions. Graduation, we have five weeks. Where do you see the projects that you started on campus heading? Like, would they travel with you? Booth will stay here. We've recently made officer positions and then elected. That's not something I'll take with me after Dartmouth, but it will still be a part of my life. I'll be in touch with these kids and, and excited about their gigs, excited about how Booth grows. Ivy League work ethic is something that I want to stick with. We're actually an LLC. We definitely wanted to stay alive at Dartmouth and have enough young talent excited about the project to perpetuate the message, mm -hmm. keeping artist collections coming. This this is a Jack Hardy. This is an Illway yeah. piece right here. Oh my actually. gosh! Shout well, out Jack well. Hardy, Jay Hardy Art. Um, <laughs> incredible awesome. stuff. Dude, I feel so good rocking these kids' products around yeah. campus. Just the principle of Ivy League work ethic. When I tell my friends from home about this project, I say, did Dartmouth teach me how to make beats or did Dartmouth teach me how to make videos? Not necessarily, but Dartmouth did teach me how to work really hard. Mm -hmm. And I want that principle and mindset to carry, carry on forever, even after I graduate. Oh my God. I know, I really love what you said though about legacy and like starting something knowing that you ne won't necessarily see it reach its peak. You get the satisfaction of knowing that you were there at the beginning, but you also have to be really comfortable with it, you know, becoming whatever it's gonna become. Are there any like last things you'd like to share, like pieces of advice for students who are like dealing with that crossroads? Anything you wanna put out there All right. to the interwebs. Dude, I do. To the 23s. Okay, Hi, to the 23s. 23s. What's up, 23s? <laughs> Worst uh, class ever. Yeah, okay. Tips for young creative people, especially those balancing really demanding academic workloads or otherwise. Consistency. Mm -hmm. Make it a habit. Yeah. You'll find that either you love living like that, you love making things, or maybe it's not for you. But if you have that love, throw yourself into it and don't look back. I'm really fortunate and grateful for my family. Shout out to my family for steering me in the right direction. Be super intentional with your time. You never have to do anything. Every decision you ever make as far as spending your time, that's all up to you. You have full agency over that. Is there any last things you like to add? Yeah, I want to give a shout out to Maggie and Girl Power. Wait, yeah. wait. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much, PJ. Yeah, for thank you, Joel. Volunteering your time. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> Thanks, YouTube. I've been a huge fan of PJ's, like from afar and obviously like up close as we become Thanks, better you. friends. But yeah, it's. Really, really awesome to be able to know that in whatever environment you are, whatever college you're at, like Ivy League or not, there are going to be awesome people who are incredibly creative as well as driven. And I just want to encourage you all, as like maybe you're approaching some sort of crossroads in your life, that um, you have the agency, as PJ said, to make the decisions and um, put into practice things that you've always wanted to do. It may take sacrifice, but it is also incredibly rewarding. And you end up with you know, new products, but also like new friendships and relationships that you may have never anticipated. Indeed. Like, we literally became friends like this <laughs> year, I would say, Thank and I'm you. so thankful for it. And it's been so fun. <laughs> Lastly, I'll have PJ's social medias, SoundCloud, and everything linked down below, as well as my own. If you'd like to follow either of us, if you haven't subscribed yet, please feel free. Join the J team. Where no one's a bench warmer, everyone's a playmaker, and I like that. yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. I like that a lot. Um, and yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Peace. <laughs>